Hello, welcome back to the channel guys, I'm EVM and in this video I want to compare using one of these versus using one of these. Essentially, rapid public charging versus a petrol station. There's been a lot of crazy, crazy increases with electricity and petrol and diesel over the last six months, 12 months, whatever, and I think it's getting to that stage now where a lot of people, a lot of media, a lot of people online are wondering whether or not that tipping point has changed. Electric vehicles have always been cheaper to fuel than their petrol counterparts, and it's been one of the greatest benefits. It's still the case if you charge at home, but what about on the public rapid charging network? Not the fast, the rapid charging network. That's one where you do a long journey and you will essentially have to use them because you've gone beyond the range of the car. I've got to that stage where electric has caught up with petrol. That benefit, at least on a long journey, which for some is only a tiny amount, but has that benefit gone? Is petrol more expensive still, or have we, uh, have we gone the other way? To figure all this out, it's pretty simple, basic maths. I just need to know the price of petrol, diesel, and of course, the electric on the charging networks. But when it comes to the rapid charging, I need to make a few points clear. One, there's a varying array of prices. Some have subscriptions, some don't. So it's a bit of a minefield and very difficult to do a broad kind of outlook on which is cheaper. So rather than have a look at, I don't know, 10 different networks and see which is cheaper compared to petrol or diesel, I thought I would just basically say, where is the break-even point? At what point do you end up paying more for the electric than you do diesel or petrol? I did have a big league table on the whiteboard and everything with about a dozen different networks on there. And then when I came to film it the following day, two of the networks had changed their prices. It literally is something you can't keep up with. So therefore, I thought, well, let, let, let's forget that. And as I said, put the break-even point. So whatever petrol and diesel is at the moment, something has to fluctuate, of course, then if it's either higher or lower than that, it's either cheaper or more expensive. And I should make very, very, very clear on this one because it will no doubt come in the comment section again, even though I'm making very, very clear on camera, this isn't how much it would cost you if you cannot charge at home. That's a different calculation completely because if, for example, I couldn't charge at home and I had to rely on the chargers at my supermarket to work if you have it, at the local car parks and council car parks and all sorts, I would use the fast chargers where possible over rapid chargers. So the fast chargers, yes, they will take several hours to give you the charge you need, but if you're at work for eight hours or at the supermarket for an hour or at a cinema or wherever, they're cheaper and that's what you would use. That's what I would try and use as much as possible because the difference between a petrol and an electric car, and this is things that I think people forget about when they're unfamiliar with them, is that you don't need to be stood next to your electric car when it's charging, or as you do with the petrol or diesel. If mine is charging whilst I'm at work, I'm not losing any time filling that car up, whereas I would do with petrol. So it completely depends on the situation and that is for a different video entirely. Right, let's get back to this. So, of course, to know how much it will cost per mile in terms of um, petrol and diesel, I need a miles per gallon. Now, I've chosen an average of 50 miles per gallon because that's pretty much the average in the UK, and that's UK miles per gallons, of course, um, and that's according to the RAC. It's actually a fraction higher than that, but I've averaged it off to make things a little bit easier on the calculations. In terms of miles per kilowatt hour, which is I think the most common one in the UK, I know Tesla's use watt hours per mile, but in terms of this, I did a video a while back and I'll show you the calculations if you're really bothered in that video. So I'll link to it in the description below and it essentially shows you what is average. So this is an exact energy equivalent to 50 miles per gallon. This is just on average what all EVs get averaged out. It's all averages of averages of averages. So for this, I've picked 3.75 miles per kilowatt hour for an EV. That's sort of the equivalent 
of 50 miles per gallon in electric car speak. So now we've got the averages, we just need the price of fuel. For this, I have gone on RACE website and they have something called the Fuel Watch, which gives you the average price of petrol and diesel in the UK on that day. So today, the average price of uh, standard unleaded is 176.8, well, 0.9, I'll round it off. Uh, diesel, that is more expensive. £1.87.4. Now this I'm going to leave blank for a second because I need to figure out where the break-even point is. And for that I'm going to use pence per mile. So using this and this I can figure out that the pence per mile for petrol is so forth. And for diesel it is, if you give me a second, 16.1 pence. Per mile, let me just put the mile there, PPM, there you go. And for diesel, that's a bit more expensive of course, 17p per mile, 17.0, so PPM. What is the pence per mile cost that will then give us the price to make the rapid charging network exactly the same as either of those? Uh, right, so if you have a petrol car and you're paying today's prices, rapid charging will become more expensive than petrol if the network charges you 60, if you're paying more than 60 pence per kilowatt hour, then it becomes more than electricity. No, it doesn't. It becomes more than petrol. Electricity on a rapid charging network is then dearer than petrol, if it's obviously lower than 60 pence per kilowatt hour, then it's cheaper. I'll just do the same calculation for diesel. That is, and again, I've rounded this off a little bit, 64p, it's just a little bit less, but essentially 64 pence per kilowatt hour. So this gives us a rough idea, depending on what network we're looking at, and I will check the networks in a second. 64p per kilowatt hour is where you break even with diesel. Um, so, you know what, given what a lot of networks charge, we're almost there. But I reiterate, rapid charging is the worst case scenario for an electric car driver. So what are the charge networks currently charging? Because again, there is a, 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 a quite a variation across the UK. There's lots of different networks, different ways of accessing them. Some have subscriptions, some don't. And that completely throws out the calculations because it depends on how much you charge. Um, but I'll put up a few of the better ones, shall we say, the more reliable ones, Instavolt and Co, uh, just so we can see where we're at. There we go. Again, with a great piece of editing, all the prices. So, these are all prices for non-subscribers or members, contactless payment, essentially. Um, so Tesla, for example, they're charging 62 pence at my nearest Tesla supercharger for non-Teslas. Uh, I think that's Manchester. As a Tesla owner, it's a bit, you know, it's a fair bit cheaper than that, but that's essentially a membership for me because you have to own a car to do it. Um, other ones, Ionity, for example, they charge 69p, but if you, uh, I think it's, is it a Genesis or a, a Hyundai? If you buy an Ionic 5, I think you get it at something like 27 pence per kilowatt hour for five years or something because they're a member of, of Ionity. So these are all what you would pay just with using your contactless payment. So Instavolt. 57p, that's cheaper than petrol or diesel. Gridserve, 50p, and I should point out that some are 48, some are 50p, depending on the speed. Again, I'm picking the highest one. So again, that, that's a fair bit cheaper than petrol or diesel. Tesla, if you can find one that, because uh, some of them are opened up, that is, well, it's more expensive than petrol, but not than diesel. Osprey, 66 pence. That's more expensive than both, and Ionity, which has been 69p from day one pretty much, and now it looks like a pretty normal price. So I guess that's not too bad, at least they haven't increased it massively. And again, for members, it's substantially cheaper. Members essentially paid for the network, so that's the justification they would have for it being cheaper for them. So I would say at the moment, in what is a very fluctuating market on both electricity costs and petrol and diesel, it's gonna flip-flop. Some are cheaper, some aren't, of course. This is assuming you get 50 miles per gallon 
on your petrol or diesel car or 3.75 miles per kilowatt hour on your EV. 50, some will get 60, some will get 40, some will get 20, some will get 70, I don't know. Again, averages of averages. Just a point of comparison, I've checked my Model 3 and over the last 35,000 miles, so basically from day one of us buying it, we have averaged a fraction over four miles per kilowatt hour. So obviously that would be, uh, you know, be cheaper for us because it's a more efficient EV. However, again, some would be less, some would be more. You have to have an average somewhere. Price of petrol, that's coming down at the moment. It used to be, what, just a, a few weeks ago, maybe a month, over two pound per litre. And then all of a sudden that has to be much higher. So it's doing this all the time, which is why it's very, very difficult to actually give you a broad answer. But essentially, I always think of rapid charging as like putting petrol in at a motorway service area, because half of the time you are at a motorway service area. So grid service, 50 pence per kilowatt hour for its high powered chargers. This is the average price of the UK. If you went to a motorway service area, you wouldn't be paying £1.76 for petrol. You'd probably be paying nearly £2 per litre. But then you have supermarkets that are far cheaper and again, it kind of evens out. EVs have been cheaper for a long time to fuel. And again, I should point this out, they still are if you're lucky enough to be able to charge at home as I do. Uh, in fact, let me tell you roughly how much I pay per mile based on the fact that I charge at home and I'm on the best tariff for an EV driver. In fact, if you have or are getting an EV and you will be charging at home, then watch this video because it effectively tells you who is the cheapest to go with in terms of which electricity tariff. I know the price cap and uh, a lot of people out there saying, don't move off the price cap. Well, if you're an EV driver and you do, well, if the car uses more electricity than the house, it's actually cheaper to go on a specific tariff for EVs. I pay less, so this is the most I pay, but less than typically two pence per mile because I charge it at night when it's much cheaper and 2p versus 17 or 16p. The price cap doesn't affect companies. That's another point to make out. It affects everyone at home, but price cap is only for residential people, I believe. Uh, companies and, and charge networks, they pay the wholesale price or at least they're guided by the wholesale price. And we pay 5% VAT for electricity uh, charge networks pay 20%. I get time and time again with any comparison. Most of the price is tax, therefore, if you get rid of tax, the price of petrol is actually really cheap. Well, considering you can't buy petrol without paying tax, it's a mute point, it's irrelevant. Uh, right, I'm done. Um, let me know what you think. It's something which has definitely crept up. Some of them will be a bit less, some will be more, but ultimately I think this, is, this paints a reasonable picture of charging in the UK. There'll be people in America looking at that, £1.87 per litre, having a heart attack, I think. But you know, that's the uh, penalty you have in the UK for, for living in such a cool country. I say that with an immense amount of irony. I live in Yorkshire. Right, uh, thank you to the Whiteboard of Truth. Thank you to you for watching. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you want to become a member of the channel, that's what you get if you click join next to subscribe. And for 99p, you get early access to these videos by up to a week and some members only videos. So at least you're getting something for your 99p a month. And let's face it, 99p a month gets you like a kilowatt and a half. Kilo hour and a half, should I say. So it's a bargain, isn't it? Anyway, thanks for watching. See you soon. I'm going to open the window now because it's about 40 degrees outside and I'm sweating like a...